Today on the show, I'm speaking with Aileen Boundy as she goes through the five steps to aligning with your purpose. It's awesome information, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Natalie Ledwell, and this is The Inspiration Show. And today, my special guest is Aileen Boundy. How are you, Aileen? <laughs> I'm fine, thanks, Natalie. Hi. Uh, now, actually, Aileen was on our show, um, then the show, like about a year or so ago, wasn't it? It's been quite a while. Yes, it was about a year ago, exactly. Just yeah. I know. And uh, when, uh, well, the last time I spoke to you, um, you were still uh, working as a teacher. Um, I was. But there has been some changes in your um, in your lifestyle. So just tell us a little bit about your journey and where you are at the moment. Mm. Well, this time last year, I was um, about to start my first online telesummit, which was my first venture into online, uh, all things online, really. <laughs> and um, as, you, as you say, I was still working as a teacher, so I was basically doing this in my summer holidays. Um, that one, that was great. I mean, you were one of my speakers last last summer, and it was really good fun. I loved it. I felt like it was what I should be doing. And really, to cut a long story short. I wasn't enjoying my teaching job anymore, and um, I've been able to leave it. I, I did work this last year, but I've been able to leave it, and um, I'm not a teacher anymore after <laughs> 33 years in the profession, so it's quite a big you know, jump, but um, I want to be able to have more time to uh, do this kind of thing and to develop it properly, because when you're doing something you know, on the side, it, it doesn't have all of your attention, all of your energy. And I think, you know, the, helping people to get clear about their life purpose is something that's so crucial for everyone, really, that it's, it, it deserves that energy, really. Yeah. And I know yeah. that you, um, the last summer that you did was about aligning with your purpose. Um, mm -hmm. So what were some of the takeaways that you got from, from some of the speakers that spoke on the summit? Um, well, from the first summit, it, it was quite interesting, really, because a lot of people um, kept saying the same things that, in different mm -hmm. ways. but. Yeah. Similar ideas kept recurring. Um, the idea of we've all got blocks to what uh, that, that hold us back from achieving what we could, and very often these blocks are hidden subconsciously. That was one main theme. Um, the idea of how important it is to go to be quiet and to learn to connect with your inner self. Um, you know, finding what you're passionate about. You know, mm -hmm. some of us who've been in jobs for a long time, we've almost we're almost resigned to not enjoying work. And you know, anything we do that that we love has to be fitted into the little time that's left after we've finished work and our work commitments. And um, what I was hearing from all the speakers was that you, we have got it the wrong way around, and we need to turn it on its head. And um, you know follow what we love to do and really it was um, the advice was not like make a great big change straight away like you know I've, no one would have advised me last year to just you know oh just don't go, don't bother going back to your job you know it, it takes a little while doesn't it but um, to start making changes and moving towards what you love doing and, and finding ways to do that and um, actually once you've made the decision to, to make some changes like that um, all sorts of opportunities, of, you know, happen. Doors open up. People come into your life in the most unusual ways, and you know, this is all what we it's we we read about it in the law of attraction, don't we? We hear about it on on seminars about the law of attraction that you know you have, you can set your intention and um, you know visualize. Your job is to be very clear about what you want. Uh, but you have to let go of how you want it, and I think that's that's a toughie for a lot of people. Yeah. And um, I know once I managed to do that, it, it all started working. You know, like well, I met you for a start. Yes. You were one of the first ones, <laughs> and and since then, I just met so many amazing people who are all helping me one way or another. You know, along my path um, to greater clarity about my life purpose. Um, um, but it, it's, it, it was interesting, practically all the speakers talked about um, some kind of meditation or at least being quiet. And actually these developed into what I call the five steps 
to aligning with your purpose. Right. Um, and so I now have these five steps that, um, okay, it's not written in stone, but it's a, it's a sort of a frame of reference that people can work within to, um, to be able to say, right, because it can seem massive, can't it? It can seem huge. <gasps> How on earth do you find your life purpose? Or what am I going to do with my life? It seems like a massive um, question or, or challenge you're putting up for yourself. But if you can chunk it down into smaller bits, like these five steps, I mean, they're not random. I did think about them, and they were based on what everyone else was saying. Yeah. I just organized them into um, a sort of a logical sequence, um, along with one of the speakers from last summer, um, a life coach called uh, Roger Kenneth Marsh, who mm. will also be on this summer. Um, and so I've got the five steps to align with your purpose um, system to help people get a bit clearer about that. Yeah, because yeah, I think there's so many of us that are... That our soul seems to be awakening. You know, we're mm. sort of getting to a point that, uh, you know, we're like, okay, well, there's got to be more to working, you know. I actually did an interview just, just recently uh, with a guy called Michael Stevenson, and mm -hmm. uh, he, he was talking about when he was working in corporate, like he was working all week, he'd get home, he's exhausted. He goes, so then you've got like two days left where you've got to yourself. He goes, and you normally sleep in because you're so exhausted. Mm -hmm, he goes, but yeah. then you've got to do all the things like clean the house, pay the bills, do all that kind of stuff. He goes, and then you just end up vegging out in front of the TV. He goes, so that was really no life. And he had years of that. Um, mm. And I think a lot of us are going, well, okay, if we want to do something that's more fulfilling, that can, you know, that makes us feel good, you know, what, is, what can that be for us? So how long were you teaching? How long have you been a teacher, Aileen? Ooh, uh, 33 years. Right. So even oh, after 33 past, years, yeah. So you're, you know, even after 33 years, you're sort of at this point. You're like, well, you know, what's next? Which is awesome. Yeah. So, yeah. so tell us about the five steps. What are the five steps that you've identified to aligning with your purpose? Okay. So step one is um, go within and connect with your higher self. Right. And you know, it's that idea of all the answers are inside you if you only manage to sit down quietly and hear them. You know, you can ask questions when you're in a quiet place or a meditative place. Um, but, you know, we're so busy. Most people are so busy. We're wandering around. We rush around and we, um, we have no time to be quiet. Uh, like you said, the, the guy you just described, you know, I'm sure he didn't have any meditation. I'm pretty sure he had no meditation in his life at that point. Um, it sounds like anyhow, and it's just, we get so exhausted, don't we? So it's really important to um, just stop, give yourself some space. It doesn't have to be meditation, although that is, you know, one of the say, preferred ways of doing it for a lot of people. Um, I certainly love it, and I've seen a difference I, every time I meditate. You know, if I don't meditate, rather, I, I know that I haven't meditated. Yes. And I love what someone said recently. They said... Um, the meditation teacher, they were saying to their teacher, oh, but I haven't got time to meditate for an hour in the morning. And the teacher said, then meditate for two hours in the morning. <laughs> <laughs> and you sort of think, right, okay, we have to just change our thinking on this one. So it's go within and connect with your higher self. And mm -hmm. it's the, that sense of, you know, we're all one, all the answers are with you. Um, you have to trust yourself and trust your intuition. And that's something that, you know, grows um, the more the more you sort of get connected with that mm -hmm. inner source. And it can be God. It can be God or higher spirit or source or whatever, anything, whatever you like to call it. There's no, for me, you know, God, Buddha, Allah, they're all one. Yeah, um, absolutely. They're all one, all the same. It's just different words like trying to express something which is not really easily expressed. And it's a, it's a connection. It's a feeling, isn't it? So, um, it's encouraging people to develop that kind of connection, mm -hmm. which we, those of us who have done meditation for a while know will lead you to insights, aha moments, all that kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, step number two is find your passions and purpose. Okay. And th those two are often linked together. Um, I'm not the first person to put those two words together mm -hmm. because when you do follow your passions, they lead you to your purpose, don't of they? Yeah. Um, and so that's, uh, you know, that's a pretty straightforward one. But it's really also about giving yourself permission to do that because, you know, we don't. We, we think, oh, 
uh, but I, I enjoy this. I should be doing some work, you know. <laughs> we don't give ourselves permission to actually go out and, uh, and spend time doing the things we love. And we have to, well, those of us who are, you know, of a certain age, like myself, um, we need to think about ourselves and, and do what makes us feel good. Um, you know, many of us, I know for, for me, I've, you know, I've brought a family up and uh, supported them. And, you know, it's very easy to slip into the, I'll do everything for everyone else and, you know, I'll come last. Uh, yep. And I'm, so I'm starting to shift that around. I want my, my kids are big enough now to look after themselves, <laughs> so I can do that, you know, without too much worry. Um, so two is find your passions and purpose. Step three is um, believe change is possible and allow yourself to dream. It's kind of two parts. And mm -hmm. that is, in a sense, it follows on because if you don't believe that change is possible and you're not going to get very far while you have that mindset, um, and it's really, you, you have to sort of start to think of what else could be, what could your life be like? If you don't like what you've got, what do you want it like? Yeah. Um, and allowing yourself to dream, um, you know, we're always taught dream big, but that's difficult if you've not done that before. And, um, uh, what, well, that's where I've used my movies many times, you know, to keep me, to build a picture of what. Um, my ideal life is like and mm -hmm. to watch it and watch it and watch it and watch it and, and then watch it happening and it's marvellous. Um, so that's number three. Um, step four, uh, this is what happened. this is kind of logical and kind of chronological. Although I, I do say, um, even though it's five steps and it looks like you do them one, two, three, four, five, once you've done that, you don't have to do it in exactly that order. There may be steps that you need to spend more time on. Everyone's different. Everyone's at a different stage. So, you know, it's flexible, obviously. Um, but this is just the most obvious progression. So step four is um, identify and release your limiting beliefs and blocks. Um, so when you, once you start making these changes and you start thinking this is possible, then you get this little... This little demon comes up on your yeah. shoulder saying, no, 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 you can't do that. Oh, you're too... You're too old, you're too young, you're too fat, you're too thin, you can't possibly do that, you know, whatever. Uh, and that's your little monkey mind telling you, trying to keep you safe, and they don't like, it doesn't like change, does that's your conscious mind. And um, so that, that, that step can take quite a lot of uh, work uh, to act a lot, to identify the, the issues, because they're very often buried deeply in the subconscious. And you may not remember them, mm -hmm. you know. You may you've, you've you've got you've not thought about them for such a long time. Um, but we've got several. Interestingly enough, when I was um, uh, contacting speakers for this uh, forthcoming Tele Summit, and I gave everyone the choice of you know please choose one of the five steps, most people chose four initially. Mm -hmm. uh, it, there was a real uh, sort of clump of, of, of requests around step four. So it just shows that's one that really is crucial to, to anyone's uh, progress in, in, in this work. Um, and there are lots of different ways to do it. I know you have your own process and you, you'll be telling us about that in your call. And we have um, all sorts of other people doing uh, that kind of different ways of clearing. Uh, and that's the great thing about the summit that you can you know, you can listen and, you know, one way may not resonate with you. Uh, hang, hang around and you'll hear someone who says something that does kind of go, oh, that sounds like it might work, you know. Yeah. So that's, that's, the, that's the four. And those are the four content steps, if you like. Uh, and step five is very, very important. But it, it, step five is just into action. Start walking the path. And it really is about taking action because we can sit and think and talk and discuss and you know, make plans and perfect, uh, or try to perfect. And if we don't actually take any action, we don't get anywhere. Nothing happens. Mm. So that's crucial, you know. Um, that's the five steps. That's what we came up with. Um, and, yeah. you know, they're, they're similar to lots of things that other other people in, in the industry are doing. It's just my particular spin on it. And, of uh, course. 
But that's why there's so many of us out there because, you know, the way that one of us will explain, you know, information may not click with someone, but then when I hear it from someone else, they will I relate more to you. And so now I understand a little bit more. So it's, you know, um, I think it's great that we, you know, that we're all out there sort of spreading, uh, you know, a fantastic message. And, you know, that's Mm. why why we support a whole bunch of other, you know, speakers and so forth because, you know, I'm not saying for, for one minute that I'm, you know, whenever when I speak, people completely understand because that's not the, not the case at all. Um, but they might hear it from, my, I might be the 50th time or the f- 49th time and it finally, yeah. oh, right, now I get it. Because, you know, when you yeah. hear it, hear, yeah. hear the same thing explained different ways and then it finally exactly. finally drops. Oh, so um, um, so we've been alluding to a, an upcoming tele-seminar um, which is going to be covering the five steps. You've got experts coming in to cover each of the five steps of the, um, right. you know, yeah. of aligning with your purpose. So, yeah. uh, so when is the tele-summit? It begins on Monday, 29th of July. Mm-hmm. Great. And so t- tell us about, uh, tell us some names that you've got uh, coming in, some experts you've got coming in. Some experts. Um, well, there's this wonderful woman from Australia called Natalie Leswell. <laughs> <laughs> I had to mention you, didn't yeah. I? Um, <laughs> yeah, I've got, um, well, there's you and, oh, who have I got? I've got Dr. Joe Rubino. Mm-hmm who's always been on the summits, he's uh, also on. But of my older, my, my sort of previous speakers, I've got Roger Marsh again. Um, who else? Marina Orms, the astrologist, astrologer that we had on last time. Mm-hmm. Um, Cristalia Marie and yes. Misa Hopkins, mm-hmm. Craig Merriweather, Laura Boltman, Janine Perlstein. Um, and I have Gina Gaudio Graves, who's become a very important person uh, to me, and um, she's going to be on as well, talking on step two, actually how to build a pa- how to build a business around your passions. So, where can we send everyone to find out more about the Tilly Summit? Aligns forward slash my movies. Perfect. Okay, and guys, if you click on the banner to the side, there you'll be able to go straight through to that website too. So uh, thanks, Aileen, for uh, for joining me today. Now, guys, I encourage you to share this video. You can do that by clicking the Facebook and the Twitter share buttons above. Um, and download the app if you haven't done so already so you, that you can watch the shows on the go. You don't have to be in front of your computer. Um, and if you haven't done so already, make sure that you put your email in the box above there because I'd love to send you my Manifesting with the Masters video e-course. It's I've got masters like Bob Proctor, John Asaraf, and Joe Vitale. It's valued at $87, and I'd like to send it to you for free. So until next time, remember to live large, choose courageously, and love without limits. We'll see you soon.